Hello guys, Oscar here, and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Now today I'm going to be teaching you guys all about logic gates, what you can do with them, what they uh, do on their own, and how to apply them in your redstone machines. Now logic, baits, uh, logic gates are the building block of any kind of logic in a redstone circuit or uh, in a regular electrical circuit in real life. Uh, and uh, basically the reason why we can get things like computers and uh, any kind of device that makes any kind of calculation. That's all, that's what they do, and uh, fo uh, follow along and we'll get right into it. Now, if you saw my last uh, redstone video, which should be up in the little uh, in the corner there, in the little i card, if you saw that la uh, that video, you will know about the three basic types of redstone components, and those uh, quickly sum summarized are the power sources, the uh, passive components, and active components. Now, logic gates are generally uh, part of the passive component section of a redstone machine, which means they manipulate the signal, process it, and uh, give their output based off on it. So, if we have this basic thing here, you, you basically you've got your signal and it goes from point A to point B. Now a logic gate, like this would this wouldn't do very much. This would like activate something and that's about it. And sometimes that's all you need. But if you want something more complex, that's what you need logic gates for. And that that will take uh, th either one or more inputs. Uh, so a lot of them take more than one input and uh, they can actually uh, they're the ones that manipulate it. So uh, follow me, I'll get into some examples. It's kinda it's a little bit harder to just explain like this, so it's best to uh, tell it's just examples. Now this first example, this is probably the simplest one, and also probably the one that I use the most in my redstone machines. Uh, the other ones I don't use that often. But this one is called the NOT gate, N-O-T, and I'm not sure if that actually stands for anything. I'm pretty sure it does, but I don't know what it is. You'd have to look that up for yourself. Uh, but basically all it does is it takes your input and reverses it. So if your input is a, is a 0 or an OFF, the output will be an ON or a 1. So there we go, and then the same, the true is, the same is true uh, when it's opposite. And uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's, it's uh, easy to build uh, as soon as uh, you have a redstone torch on the side of a block. If you power that block, that redstone torch will turn off. And uh, this is really useful in things like um, sorting circuits, uh, where the hopper will be locked all the time until an item of a certain kind goes through and it'll unlock it. Uh, things like super, super smelters, you know, all kinds of stuff. And actually, fun fact, this, uh, the redstone repeater, you'll notice it has two redstone torches. And the reason why is because uh, in the really early days of Minecraft, before you had actual repeaters, uh, people would do this. They would go like this, like that, like this, like that. And that essentially it extends the redstone signal, and it's pretty much two NOT gates running into each other. Which is pretty simple, and it's simple enough, and uh, yeah, it's probably one of the most used, used and most useful circuits out there. Okay, now this next logic gate, this is called the OR gate, and that uh, that uh, is general is at a default. Uh, it's off unless, of course, you run into a NOT gate. Uh, and the, the way this one works is uh, either input uh, this input or the other one. See, see how that, see how that works? Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, get it. Uh, either this input or the other one uh, will give an output. So that one works, and this one works. And then uh, actually, if you do both of them, pretty pretty obviously, uh, it'll also give an output. And this is useful for things like if you have a, if a door on one side and you can open it, or if you have a T flip flop and it'll open from that side, and then you can also close it from that side because they both run into the same input. And this thing can be built a million different ways, especially, uh, this is probably the more common way to build it. And uh, basically any two inputs running into each other will, uh, and to make, to make one line, that gives an OR gate. It's pretty simple and uh, it's pretty useful as well. It's also worth mentioning that you can repeat this design uh, with any number of inputs. Like here's a three input design. The only thing is that you need to have it so that any input will have something. So like if it'll, if it's really far away, you might want to add a repeater like this, or something like that. But uh, generally speaking, like yeah, you can just exp you can. This is this is uh, infinitely expandable. So you can make it so there are like a hundred different inputs for your door. You know, uh, if you want to. I, I don't know why you would do that. Uh, but that's what the OR gate does. Uh, I kind of had to break clips there because I totally forgot to add the, the functionality part of it like I just mentioned. But yeah, on to the next thing. This next gate so it looks a little bit more complicated than uh, the other ones. And it actually, in a way, it kind of incorporates the NOT gate uh, just like the other ones. Like, remember I said the NOT gate was probably the most simple? And yeah, that, that shows exactly why. Because um, it has, in a way, it has two NOT gates, or it has uh, three NOT gates that are all working together. And this is called the AND gate, and it only gives an output if every single input is activated. So if this and that are both on, it'll give an output. So that one's off, nothing happens. If that one's off, nothing happens. But if both of them are off, it gives an output. Now this is the simplest way to build one from what I've seen. Uh, the, well, once again, like this, just like this one, there's a million different ways you can build it. And uh, this is really, really useful for things like combination locks and... Uh, yeah, combination locks are probably the biggest ones, but uh, yeah, any number of factors that they all have to be good, that's uh, what you would use this for. It only gives an output if a bunch of factors are fine. 
And this is, this is also infinitely expandable if you do something like this. And I think you need to change things a little bit. Yep, it's uh, just like this. If you just extend this out a little bit, suddenly you have a. Uh, this is a three, a three input AND gate, and it only gives an output if all three of these inputs are on. You can't have these two. There's no other combination that'll work. And uh, with uh, I'll be getting more into applications later, but uh, yeah, that, that's what this is uh, most useful for. I just realized you don't need these blocks. And uh, these are the three. I think I said four, uh, but these are the three most common. Um, logic gates. There's other ones, you know, the XOR gate, there's a bunch of different ones that are in computers and all kinds of crazy stuff, but those are a lot more com complicated, and I, honestly speaking, I don't know very much about those more complicated ones, so I'm sticking to these for this tutorial, and if you want to look uh, look up more than that, then uh, there's definitely great resources out there. Okay, so this is my uh, piston door design that I made that incorporates all of these features, and uh, I want to say, don't build this in your, uh, in your own world. There's no reason for you to build something this complicated. There's way simpler like things out there. You don't need to worry about all the logic for something like a piston door, but this is good for demonstration purposes. And uh, to start things off, oh, I fell. Uh, to start things off, we got a, uh, an AND gate, uh, or a combination lock, just like the one over there. And uh, what that does is, well, you know what it does. Uh, but when you do to get an output on the end gate, so therefore if you do that and that, oh whoops, oh no, wrong one. Uh, if you do this one and that one, then uh, this will actually unpower and then therefore open the door uh, because of block updates and yeah transmission signals. If you want to learn how this observer line is actually powering this stuff, then check out my video that I have in my the i card up in the corner. Uh, but right now, uh, yeah, so right now we can see when it's open, uh, that means this thing unpowered. And I kind of just had to squeeze the knot gate in there. There wasn't really a use for it, so you'll just have to know that that's sort of useful. Um, and so that's when it, when, uh, it gives an output, that's what happens. Uh, so when, when you get the right output, it'll unpower this and trigger the whole thing. And uh, if you get any other combination, it'll fill back up, or fill back up, close, and uh, that'll sort of do that. Now, how does this make, how, so those are two, right? You got the knot gate and you got your AND gate. Well, here's your, uh, well, you got your knot gate and your, yeah, your AND gate, never mind, sorry. Uh, your not gate, and then here's your or, your OR gate. So if you have that output, uh, it'll open, or if you have this output, it'll open, and that doesn't really make a difference. And you can see right here, these are the two inputs running to the same thing, and uh, therefore we get a working door system. I mean, it, like I said, this isn't practical at all. Why would you have a combination lock on one side and not one on the other? Like I don't know, it's not practical. But that's not why, why I made it. I made this so that you guys could see exactly what was happening, and uh, hopefully that made some sense. If you have any questions, whoops. Uh, if you have any questions, be, uh, be sure to drop them down in the comments. But that rounds out this video, so thank, I want to thank you guys for watching. That really does mean a lot to me, and uh, once again, I alt-tabbed. I do that all the time. Uh, ignore that error down below. That's just Optifine. Um, but yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. That really does mean a lot to me, and uh, if you hadn't already, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing. That would mean a lot, too. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. See you later.